The forthcoming Magic in the Air tour, I understand, is starting in Cardiff. Well, the next bunch of gigs is starting in Cardiff. We're doing a few festivals through the summer. We've just got back from Sidmouth Folk Week, and we're going to uh, a new day in Kent and Folk East in uh, Suffolk next weekend. Wow. And then the, the first um, concert gig, as opposed to festival, is uh, Cardiff St David's on yeah. the 8th of September. I imagine Lindisfarne has played Wales many times over the years. Not only going way back. I mean, when, when the band was established and doing the big uh, Christmas shows in the in the early 80s, we used to go to St David's Hall regularly. In fact, right. I think we may have done two nights there uh, a, a couple of times. And We've always had a, um, a great empathy with the South Wales audiences. I think they're a lot like Geordie's in a lot of ways. Mm. You've got the, you know, the, the the social background, the industrial background, similar sense of humour, similar sense of looking out for one another. And uh, we, we've always had a great response when we we'll go to South Wales and North Wales as well. Let's not neglect that. Uh, we've yeah. got uh, friends up in North Wales and I've done a couple of solo and duo gigs in uh, Dolgethley in that area. And it's I, I, I think Wales is just a great country culturally and, and very good at supporting the arts as well. There were a few incarnations of Lindisfarne before you started out in the 1960s, weren't there? We had the, uh, the Downtown Faction uh, blues band. We were, we were a straight blues band, actually. Mm. And, um, you know, doing Muddy Waters and Howling Wolf and all that kind of stuff. And then we uh, diversified when it became harder to get gigs. That music became a bit kind of unfashionable. In, uh, in the clubs and things where we did most of our gigs. And it was moving more into disco and glam and heavy metal and stuff, which which we weren't into. So we went the other way and um, started getting into folk blues, Lead Belly, Woody Guthrie, that kind of stuff. And that gave us access to the folk clubs and playing the folk clubs at Tyneside. And it was a very active scene. There was a, there was a club somewhere on Tyneside every night of the week, really you know, 50 or 60 people gathered into a room um, listening to, well, I mean, the, the traditional folk songs were largely uh, ballads, mining songs, uh, Irish ballads from the, uh, the the Irish community on Tyneside. And um, we, we learned about songs that tell a story, songs that have good choruses, uh, good melodies, things that people can latch on to at first hearing. But but still, hopefully, with a, a, enough depth to be able to discover more on second, third and, and further hearings. And of course, most significantly for us, it was where we came into contact with Alan Hull, mm. who'd, who'd had a beat group background, um, but was spreading his wings as a singer songwriter and found the same thing with folk clubs that he had, that he had a ready made audience for his songs. And his, his writing was influenced by by that scene as well. And uh, we we fitted together like hand in glove. He he was looking for a band, and uh, we we could do with a uh, a talent like his, and especially with a you know a prolific songwriter with such a big catalogue. It was the beginning of a big journey for you getting signed into and across England. That journey is documented on a new album release called Radio Times, which encompasses all your early BBC radio sessions with Brian Matthew and later John Peel, who got behind the band. What are your memories of those times? Great times. Uh, I mean, we when we um, joined forces with Alan, it was obvious to, to us and to a lot of other people, I think, that uh, something was happening here. And uh, we were lucky to get signed by the Charisma label, which which was a great label with a reputation for being slightly off the wall, you know, having slightly oddball acts like Van de Graaff Generator, Genesis, um, a, a, a few others. And when they signed us up, it was a stipulation of the contract that we moved to London. And uh, that was a wise move on their part, actually because we spent a lot of time um, down in London. We all, you know, got accommodation 
down there, starting off staying on friends' floors and things like that, and then eventually renting accommodation of, of our own. And um, it meant that Charisma could make use of us all the time, uh, either for interviews or promo gigs, of course, you know, and, uh, you know, London, the outlying areas, and it was e easy to get to, to other gigs. And, uh, and the radio sessions, which we, we, we really did a lot of, actually. Um, and it, it, Charisma was right in making us do that because they, it, it, um, it, it, it kind of created a, a hothouse atmosphere within the band. It brought us together as a band. We were constantly working on the band. You know, they, the record company made sure we, we, we never had a, a day off, basically, whether it was gigging or a radio session. Or, or something, um, but it was great fun as well. You know, we were young lads at large in the big city, as it were, and uh, and radio sessions were great fun as well because you were given a bit of leeway. It was usually like four songs, and they 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 wanted two two hits or sort of you know well known songs, and and two pretty much whatever we liked. So we'd either dig back into the blues band catalog or or try songs that we hadn't tried out before. And uh, and you didn't get very long to do it either. You were, you were only there for about three hours. So we what we usually did was record the backing track and then overdub the, the lead vocal or any solos on, on top of that. Mm. So it's all pretty spontaneous really. And I, th I think that comes over in, uh, in the Radio Times recordings. And it's great to hear it again. It really takes me back to then. Do you think New Blood coming into the band has helped prevent it from going stale? It, it, it has. I, I mean, the thing is, in over 50 years of the band's existence, inevitably you have ups and downs in that. Times when you're, when you're riding high, times when people aren't taking so much notice of you. And um, similarly, style-wise, there's been a few changes of style over the years, some for better, some for worse. Uh, but since this band got together in 2013 and asked me to rejoin in 2015, it's become very much a return to first principles. The, and the, the lineup is very similar. It's very diverse. Uh, most of us play more than one or two instruments. Uh, we've got two front men again. Uh, instead of Alan and Jacka, we've got uh, myself and Dave, who is Alan Hull's son-in-law, and, and regards it as his mission in life <laughs> to uh, foster <laughs> and uh, promote his father-in-law's heritage, which he's well, very, very good at doing. I mean, he's, he's vocally, he has a very strong resemblance. He, he's got Alan's guitar playing off to a T. And... Um, yeah, it's it, it, it's a really good team, and I think we um, we we value each other, we respect each other as musicians, and we all get along great. So, what can we expect from the Cardiff show? We do do all the biggies. Meet me on the corner. We can swing together, fog on the time, run for home, etc. But uh, we've got a. I mean, Alan and the previous band left us with such a. Uh, a catalog you know a, a legacy that we can circulate the, the all, all the other songs in the set there's about you know maybe maybe six songs that we always played the, the, the ones i just mentioned mm. um and everything else we can circulate and program according to to make a you know a set list with a bit of a uh, bit of variety a bit of rise and fall yeah. in it and um it, it it works it works great I get my own solo spots in the in the band set with the band backing me and, and when I'm when it, when I'm doing my stuff I couldn't wish for a better band behind me mm -hmm. and when Dave or one of the others is doing something of theirs it's just a great band to be in I just like falling back and being a sideman it's it's the best of both worlds really